Hello people, how are we doing? Welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel. Um, just wanted to, you know, do a little video. I ain't done one for a while, but um, there's a few things that are concerning me lately. Um, there's this whole thing about um, job advisors going into hospitals where people are long-term sick. Um, there's even people, advisors, going into um, mental health hospitals. If someone's in a mental health hospital, then clearly the condition that they've got is severe enough that they need to be kept in a certain place where they can receive permanent, you know, constant attention. What I don't get is why the hell are they sending job centre staff into these places? What are they expecting that someone who's, I don't know, for argument's sake, paranoid schizophrenic, um, who has very bad delusions, uh, how are they expecting them to suddenly jump up and go, OK, I've filled out my CV, I'm going to go and get a job. This is really, really getting harsh from the government. I mean, some of the rubbish that they've come out with so far is disgraceful. But people who are genuinely that ill being approached by someone from the job centre to f help them fill out a CV, help them potentially get back into work, what if this person is going to be long term in this hospital? How how is any of that helping? I mean, they're having people go into hospitals, not necessarily into mental health hospitals, but going into hospitals with people and saying, "We're going to get you out of this hospital, and we're going to get you back into work." Granted, there's a lot of people who are probably ill but want to get back into work. I mean, I myself, I've been off for a, quite a while. I have mental health um, illnesses, I've got depression and anxiety. Um, one day differentiates to the next with my condition, I'm medicated for it, but there are days when I just don't want to move from my bed. I see my bed as my little private sanctuary from the world. Um, there's days when I just don't feel up to, you know, being in contact with people, even my, even my own wife, because of my mental illness. So if something like that's happening to me, and I don't consider myself to be very severely mentally ill, but I am mentally ill, um, when's it going to stop? You know, I mean, this government, I, granted, I understand that they want to get lots of people back into work and they want, you know, they think it's going to improve people's lives and things like that. To an extent, it might do. I mean, since I've been um, off with this illness, I've got limited capacity for work-related activity. Um, and I'm on PIP. I've tried working in the past few years while I've had this condition. And yeah, there's times when it's absolutely fine. But how flexible... They talk about um, employers being flexible for people with mental health illnesses. How flexible are people in charge of shops, factories, businesses who employ people like me? How are they going to be that flexible if, for argument's sake... I go into a job and then I have, I've woken up uh, that day and I'm having a very, very bad mental health day like one I'd have if I was to stay in bed for the majority of it and not interact with anybody. How are they going to react if I phone in and say, sorry, I can't come in today, I'm having a bad mental health day? They might let that slide a few times, but if it happens more and more often, I mean, I feel that my mental health some days is getting worse and that's not because of being unemployed that's not because of being inactive as they seem to want to put it but it's down to having a mental illness I don't understand how they're going to work it with people um, and it's it's ridiculous I mean as I say yeah there's people out there who've got worse mental health than me like I say people who are on mental health wards in mental health hospitals long term how are they expected to get up and just walk out the door and go and get a job? It's ridiculous. I mean, it's, I don't, it's probably not going to happen. But it's the fact that they're pushing this constant fear, like with the budget at the end of the month, there's talk that they're going to reduce benefits for people who are on disability benefit. <coughs> They're more or less taking away a person's way of life and 
what they live on to prove the point that they can get people back into work, that work pays, that work helps with your mental health. It doesn't. Like I say, I've had jobs since I've been on, since I've been on, signed off sick. I have had a couple of jobs in the past few years. And there's days when everything's absolutely great. You know, the sun's shining, everything's rosy. And then there's other days when I just feel so down in such a dark, dark place that I don't want to leave the house. I don't understand how how they're going to make it work. They're just going to end up causing more problems for people with mental health. And when things have happened in the past with this and they've tried getting to, uh, people with mental health illnesses back into work, there's been people who have ended their own lives unalive themselves to keep it safe for YouTube because of the pressure that they were placed under and their mental health couldn't handle it. Now if at the end of the month when the budget comes out the government are going to be reducing people's disability benefits or benefits in general then what, when's, it, when's it going to stop? You know, Where's it going to end? There's people at the moment who are on benefits who can't necessarily afford to live, they can't afford to heat their homes and eat. There's people um, who work, but still have to claim universal credit to top up their earnings because they're not making enough money. They used to do a thing in a job centre, I don't know if they do now, where they do a um, better off calculation. And I had one a few years ago, uh, before I was signed off sick, where I said to the person in the job centre, can you do a better off calculation for me? Because I was expected to look for jobs and they said to me I remember vividly one of the, per the person I was speaking to said to me after working everything out you'll be better off staying on benefits that came from someone in the job centre I don't know if they do that anymore but if you're put into this position as someone with mental health who's been unemployed for x y z amount of time ask them that say to them can you do a calculation of whether I'd be better off earning money or by staying on benefits. Now, if they do it, you'll be surprised that a lot of it, they will say you'll be better off on benefits. Because with what myself and my wife get every month, <coughs> it's enough to, for us to get by. Granted, sometimes it's difficult and money is tight. If you ask them for this better off calculation, then they themselves can potentially say to you, well, you'd be better off doing this or you'd be better off doing that. If they say you'd be better off going to work and they can actually prove it with figures in front of you, then it's worth doing. But the other side of things is, how are they going to support someone? I mean, like myself, I've been unemployed for several years. Um, even if I was to write out a CV, there's a huge gap between the last time I was working and my cousin, current cousin, current position. Now, how am I going to fill that in? I haven't done voluntary work. I haven't really done very much else in order to fill in the gaps of these years of space where I've been off because of illness. Someone's going to look at that, an employer, potential employer, they're going to look at that and say, well, why am I going to give you a chance? Even before I was signed off with illness and I had to attend the job centre weekly and I had to look for jobs every single day and do all of the process that they expect you to do to retain your benefits before Universal Credit this was. How are you expected to do all of that and find jobs when there's no jobs? I live in an area where it's a seasonal town so therefore, for four, five, six months of the year, everywhere's shut down because it's autumn, winter, etc. So there's, that's lots of potential jobs that are not available to me and a lot of other people. I just don't understand where the government are going with this. Um, is it going to end up being that the government say, you must get a job or we're going to completely take your benefits away? I don't think legally they can do that because it's against human rights. But... In, I, I believe, anyway, if I'm wrong, then correct me in comments. But if they suddenly turn around and say, if you don't go out and get a job, we're going to take your money off you. If there's no job to go out to, how can they justify 
taking your money away from you because you can't find a job. If there's no jobs out there for someone like me, I'm relatively unskilled. Um, I've got experience in certain areas, but I left school with bad qualifications. I went as far as GCSEs, didn't do very well because I wasn't interested at the time. Hated school. And so that obviously affected me further down the line. I've tried doing um, courses outside of since I've left school and a lot of them don't really are not really relevant so what I don't get is what I don't understand is how is this government expecting people to go out and get a job if there's no job for a person to go into if they were to do it so that they suddenly produce a large amount of jobs in my local area and in other local areas similar to mine other seaside towns other seasonal areas then that would be great but that's not what they're doing Labour are just trying to get people who have been long-term sick up off their asses, as they're putting it, because that's the impression that they've got of us, because we don't work, because we're inactive, that we just sit on our asses and do nothing all day. For some of us, that may be the case. For others, it's not. Um, and it comes to looking at mental health as well. My wife, she hasn't been out of the house for three years due to her mental health. Now, she's on PIP as well, and how are they expecting her to go out and get a job? She hasn't been out of the house for three years. She's too anxious to go out of the house. Her mental health is that severe that she will not go out of the house. She will not even go in our back garden. So how do they expect, how is this going to impact her? And in effect, it's going to impact her, it's going to impact me. Vice versa, if they suddenly start expecting me to do all of these things, how's it going to affect me and affect her? If they suddenly turn around to me and say, right, we're going to stop your benefits unless you get a job. What if I can't get a job? What if because of what I've already said about the gaps in my employment history, someone doesn't want to give me a job, doesn't want to give me a chance? Because I haven't got qualifications, because I haven't got experience, because I've got large gaps of unemployment in my CV. I just don't understand how the government can justify it. Yes, they say about wanting to save money, but that's bullshit because they're spending billions on all the people that are coming into the country every day, every week, every month. It makes no sense at all. Instead of putting it to the people that are coming into this country and making it difficult for them, they're making it too easy for them and they're making it difficult for us. The British people to survive in our own country. Let me know what you think in comments. Um, as I say, this is a bit different to my normal video, um, but it's still regarding mental health. Um, if things don't change, I can see there being masses of shit going on that the government doesn't want going on. Um, what they need to do is they need to look at and look after us first because we're already here we were grew we grew up in this country it's our country they need to prioritize us over all of these people that are fleeing other countries some of them are legitimate some of them are not they need to prioritize that and they need to sit back and think well hang on maybe if we were to do this so that there's less of them coming in we'd save money but they're not I don't understand it. As I say, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, this was a completely different video to what I'm normally putting out. Um, hopefully this will get noticed, perhaps get some traction. Um, ideally, like and subscribe. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks for watching.